Hi everyone, it's Julia and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're talking about the worst books of 2019. That's right. It's my favorite video to watch at the end of the year. I'm literally obsessed with watching people rant about books that they hated. Not because I'm like a negative person, but just because I think it says a lot about who you are by the way you talk about the books that you didn't enjoy. So I've got my list of the 10 worst books that I read this year, 10 sinners to go with my 10 winners. Um, and I'm just ready to dive right in. If you haven't already watched my top 10 books of 2019, maybe save that for after actually, because that'll be like a nice way to end this experience. Um, unless you just came here for a generally snarky attitude, in which case, let's carry on. These are both the objectively worst books that I read this year, as well as just like the most disappointing to me. Um, there were a couple of these books, I think two in particular, actually kind of three, where I was like, this is gonna be it. This is one for me. And then I read the book and the book said, <laughs> you really thought, and uh, I thought wrong. So let's talk about these 10 books. They're in no particular order, except the worst one actually is the first one I wrote on the list because I was like, oh, that's one to talk about, thanks. Um, it's The Bronze Horseman by Paulina Simons, Simmons, I forget. <sighs> wow. This was a case of I knew what I was getting myself into and yet I tried to plow through anyways and why? What was the point? It did nothing to benefit me. <sighs> the Bronze Horseman is the first book in a trilogy. It blows my mind that this book is 800 pages and it couldn't even tell the whole story. <sighs> um, about a girl named Tatiana and a guy named Alexander and it's I think it's World War One. They're in Russia. Things are awful. The whole book is people slowly starving to death and a toxic relationship. Oh, huh, look at that. That didn't take 800 pages to say, did it? Um, Tatiana is probably the dumbest character I've ever read in a story and not just like in a way that like serves the plot even though her dumbness I guess did serve the plot because that's how she met Alexander that's why she even liked Alexander is because she's dumb um I just can't even get into it like the girl can't even remember a grocery list her main character trait is she really loves ice cream and blueberries. <sighs> what a girl. Alexander was awful. Would never want to be in a relationship with someone like him. Very possessive, very yuck, did not like. <sighs> and the sad thing is, is that this book actually had one of my favorite like love triangle tropes, which is that both of the sisters were interested in the same guy um, and I've talked about this before and I'll say it till the day I die a good love triangle has three different people who all care about one another in some way um, I guess the problem in this love triangle is that both of the girls were interested in Alexander and Alexander was only interested in Tatiana and he was just kind of nice to the sister because he liked Tatiana so that's why it failed. Um, but in theory, that's a spicy dynamic because there's a lot of like lines of feelings that you're tiptoeing around. I can't, I don't know what to say about this book. Like there was one character that I almost liked and then he died. <laughs> book bad. Okay. Number two, we have The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides. This book 
didn't do anything for me. I felt yucky that it was these teenage boys basically like spying on and invading the lives of these teenage girls. Um, so I didn't like that that was the point of view. <sighs> Obviously the story was sad. I don't mind a sad story. <laughs> My favorites list literally had the lovely bones. Hello. Um, and they were like really similar almost. Like they're both like 60s, 70s, uh, very slice of life, about grief. Like there's a lot of similar themes between these two books, but The Lovely Bones like had characters that I felt for and like really had me invested and The Virgin Suicides just made me feel like I was being a voyeur on the misery of these teenage girls and that is yucky. So I didn't like it. And also I think you can get the story from the movie and have the exact same experience, but maybe even better because at least you get to like see it aesthetically. So there you go. The next book I have on this list is Ensnared by, I forget the author. Um, this is the third book in the Splintered trilogy. And I have a weird relationship with this series because I think Splintered is not a good book, but it's a book I think about a lot. Like, I can't explain to you why it's so prominent in my head. I read it years ago, and yet I just have like very vivid memories of the story, and I think about it a lot. And it's very interesting because I think it's maybe the only love triangle ever in the history of the world where I prefer like the bad boy over like the good boy. Um, I mean, that's a really like oversimplification of the characters, but they're pretty dang simple. So I guess maybe not really. Um, it is a Alice in Wonderland retelling and it's about like this girl who's like the great, great granddaughter of Alice Liddell. Her name is Alyssa, <laughs> go figure. Um, and she's like very, <laughs> very much a cliche skater girl and it's almost embarrassing. It's very indicative of the time this book was written. And the first book was fine. I think I gave it like three, three and a half stars. Second book, also fine, but it was more set in the real world than in Wonderland, so that didn't do it any favors. And then this third book, what happened? Like, it's just such a weird story. I mean, there's like major plot things that Alyssa literally sleeps through. Like there's this battle and then she like passes out or whatever. And then afterwards she's like, well, how are we going to fix Wonderland? And they're like, oh, well, we already, we took care of it. You were in a coma. Remember, we just cleaned it up for you. I'm like, what? <laughs> and, and I mean, like points for boldness. But literally, and this is spoilers for the end of the Splintered Trilogy, if you care, she didn't even have to choose between the two love interests. What? Through the whole series, there's been this stupid love triangle. Jeb, yes, his name is Jebediah, is her best friend from childhood and her high school crush. And Morpheus is this... dragonfly fairy man from Wonderland. What is he? I don't know. Um, and you know what? She didn't even have to choose. She didn't even have to choose. She said, I'm gonna live my human mortal life with Jeb, and then after he dies, then I'm gonna head to Wonderland and get with Morpheus. And they were just okay with this? I'm... Like, that's nuts to me. I mean, kudos. Like I said, it's it's a bold choice. It's a creative solution. But I'm not so sure that it was the right choice or the right solution. But what do I know? The next book I have on this list is one of the ones that is uh, most disappointing to me. And that is The Dead Queen's Club 
by Hannah Capen. Moment of silence. So this was one of those books that I, well, I don't like the cover, but I saw the title, I read the synopsis, and I went, oh, <laughs> let's do this. It is a modern high school retelling of Henry VIII and his six wives. A hello. That's right up my alley. It was a mess. Okay, because first of all, our main character is Cleves. Anna of Cleves. That's his fourth wife. So there are three girls in this story who are already out of the picture. Spoiler alert. One is dead. Literally dead. Pardon? And we also don't even actually read about his, well, we do read about it, but like his relationship, his fourth relationship with Anna of Cleves isn't even where this book begins. It begins with his fifth wife. So that's absurd. I mean, she's not literally his wife because they're in high school, but I just don't understand that choice. That makes no sense to me. This book was also really confused. It didn't know like, am I a contemporary? Am I a murder mystery? Am I like a revenge thriller? It didn't know and neither do I, to be honest. I think the strongest parts of the story were when it was more of like a revenge thriller. Um, but like, I can't believe this book took so long to do what Six the Musical could do in like 30 minutes, you know? Just saying, like, we can bring the wives together in a much easier way. Can I help you? They also hate this book. I don't know, like I hated the character development. I knew I would hate Henry, but it felt like all of the wives were pretty oversimplified. Um, kudos for Cat Howard at least like being recognized as the victim that she is in history because oh my god that poor girl <sighs> but I don't know I just <laughs> didn't do it right and I feel bad saying this and I have a galley for Foul is Fair which is her next book and it's another like retelling I think it's a Macbeth retelling yes it is that's the title um, so I really hope I like it. And then maybe I can look back at this and be like, I was a fool for not appreciating her work, but. Ugh. Okay, number five on this list, we have What Should Be Wild by Julia Fine, I believe is the author's name. I don't even know what to say about this book because I've never read a book more confusing. I truly couldn't tell you what this book was about. The girl, the main character, kills people with her touch, but also brings them back to life, I think. It's kind of pushing daisies. Was that her power? I think so. Um, and so she's like being hidden by her scientist dad and their housekeeper because she got powers, but it was so weird. Like, there was, like, this mystery about her mom, I think. And also she got kidnapped at one point. Oh, I think it was, like, an opposing scientist. I, I couldn't tell you. In the end, I think there were ghosts. It was really strange. And, like, the idea of the book was really cool. But it was just so confusing. I don't know. I read this a very long time ago and I was confused about it then. So obviously my confusion has increased. But all I can say is, what? Huh? There were like so many unanswered questions. I remember reading a really good Goodreads review for it. So I'll leave that down below because I second their opinion. <laughs> Next we have Inland by Taya Orbet, I think is her name. I don't know how to pronounce anybody's name. It's fine. Um, this was one that had me all excited. I got an arc of it, so I was like, okay. 
and it is a female-led western, which I really like, but I was like bored and confused. Those were the two feelings I had when I read this. Um, there are two points of view. The one of the housewife, I think her name was Nora maybe, um, was much more interesting and less confusing I think than the other one. Um, she like lived with her husband and her sons and her husband's younger cousin or niece um, who is like, I can talk to ghosts. And she's like, I'm sure you can. Um, but can she? I don't know. The book didn't make it very clear. Um, but that would have been really cool if she was. Um, and then the other point of view was a man who I think was Turkish. His name changed like five different times. So I don't remember any of his names and I don't know what to call him. And he was like traveling around on a camel and being like, hey, you ever seen a camel before? And everyone was like, no, look at how strong it is. Wow, it hardly needs any water. Zippy, what is zippy? Um, and when their two plot lines finally converged, it was too late to be interesting. It was the end of the book. Like, I don't know, the pacing was so weird. I thought that like household drama and the are there ghosts things, that really worked for me. The interweaving of those two plot lines didn't. And frankly, I was just left kind of confused. So chalk that one up on the Julia is confused list because it's often the case. Okay, next we have a couple that I've recently talked about in one of my retroactive wrap ups. So I'm already exhausted thinking about talking about them again. We have Brooklyn by Colum Toban. Toibon? I looked it up and I still don't know how to say his name. <coughs> this was a huge disappointment for me. The pacing was awful. The characters did not shine the way they did in the movie. The movie was so much better than the book. And uh, I don't want to say like I hated the main character, but I hated just about every choice she made. So maybe I did hate her. Um, and you know, I love a character driven novel. I was just talking about this in my top 10 books. This was like a character driven novel, except there's no character growth. The character doesn't do anything interesting. She is hard to understand. So like, can it can it can a book be neither character driven nor plot driven? Because that's what Brooklyn is. It's just like, this happened, the end. <sighs> It was so boring. Also, Brooklyn fails because it doesn't have official chapter breaks. Oh, you know what? I didn't even talk about any books that I DNF'd. Do those belong on this list? Maybe not. I can talk about those in my stats video because I have the same complaint about Call Me By Your Name. Don't fight me. I know a lot of people love Call Me By Your Name. Next, we have The Dream Thieves by Maggie Steve Otter. I, <laughs> this is another one on the I am confusion list. Where is the series going? Why is Ronan the worst? What's going on with Adam's character development? Why can't Noah just have joy? These are my questions about the dream thieves. Um, and why is Gansey so pretentious? I always seem to leave him off my list of characters for some reason. It's like I am so ambivalent towards him. He's just kind of there for me. Um, everyone loves the Raven Cycle and I want to love the Raven Cycle, but I can't love the Raven Cycle when I don't love the characters. <sighs> I just, I don't know, this book, maybe it's because it's so Ronin centric and he's my least favorite character out of all of them, but like, I know it's called the Dream Thieves. I was bored to tears when he and Kavinsky were doing the same scene again and again of, I'm dragging you back to sleep. Oh, I brought a pen back. Oh, I'm dragging you back to sleep. Oh, I brought this back. Like, I get it. You take things out of dreams. It's a cool idea. Can we do something with it instead of repeating the same scene four times? Just a thought. Um, I don't know. It was really boring. 
and I just want Noah and Blue to be together, and I know they won't be, so what's the point of me continuing the series, right? Genuinely, that's my thought. Okay, two more books. This one I've already ranted about also. It's The Sworn Virgin by whatever the author was. It's this was literally the book on this list that was the most disappointing. I can't even say the word disappointing because I'm so flustered with all my negative emotions. Um, the idea, so cool. This girl in like 1900 Albania uh, becomes a sworn virgin so she can live as a man and she's like if I don't get married then I can have a job and I can wear pants and I can live by myself and I can manage my own money and nobody can tell me what to do like that's dope what a cool idea for a plot of a book for a historical book for her to be like <laughs> psych I don't have to follow any of your expectations because we literally have a cultural loophole for those expectations that's amazing um, this book blew it big time because, and look, I knew, I knew there was going to be a romance and that it would turn around and she would like break her vow of chastity, I suppose. And I was prepared for that. Like that was going to be spicy and interesting. It wasn't because the guy was the worst. It wasn't even like, I just, I like, I don't understand out of everyone she could have fallen for, she falls for like this guy who's old enough to be her dad and he doesn't really even treat her that well. And it's like, you had a good thing going and you ruined it for that. I don't, I don't get it. <sighs> there are a big list of spoilers in my last retroactive wrap up, I will link that here so you can hear more about this book if you're interested. But it just, the ending was a mess. It was a mess. Like it almost resolved in a good way and then it didn't. So I just, I'm left wondering why. Didn't like it. Okay, moving on. The last book on my least favorites list, The Sinners of 2019 is the Last Magician by whatever the author's name is. <sighs> I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. Um, people say that this book, and it's a series also, again, another series where the books are like yay thick and there's more than one. Why do you even need that much? I, I couldn't tell you. So people say this series is good for fans of the Diviners. In theory, I see why that's true, because they're both historical, low fantasy, people have powers, it's like about a group of people, but also the last magician like can't even <laughs> hold a candle to the diviners. I'm sorry. So many of the characters are underdeveloped. The main romance literally like angered me in some scenes, like it was just so... Like, why? Can someone please explain hate to love romances to me? I would love to understand the hype because I guess they can be done well. In this case, it was like hate to begrudging like. I don't even think we reached love. I don't, I don't, I don't get the hype. Like, I don't understand hate to love. It's about like this girl who her power involves time, like she can stop time for a certain amount of time, like she has to really hold her concentration. And so she like accidentally travels back in time, accidentally on purpose. She travels on purpose but gets stuck there accidentally. So it's like the early, it's like right before the 1920s, right? Um, and it's in New York also like the diviners but I just like couldn't stand her and I think the only character who was interesting in the group um was what was her name I think her name was Viola um and she was like throw knives 
and I was like ooh that's fun and she was like disowned from her family or like ran away from her family or something and like she was the most interesting character and she was still kind of a one note character um the two main guys I kept confusing one was like the leader of the gang and the other was the love interest and for some reason their names in my brain I could not keep straight so I was constantly thinking that one was another and then I go oh no this is the other guy you dumb dumb um so that I'm sure did wonders for my enjoyment there was one thing that I did like in this book and it was like a plot twist and it was after a plot twist that I hated and was bad and dumb um because I was like that literally serves no purpose in character development nor does it affect things that have already happened so stupid but then immediately afterwards I was like but it would be amazing if this happened and then that did happen and I was like yes um I don't know if it's spoilery I'll just say it had to do with the time travel element I'll just vaguely say that um so that part was good, but this book just did a lot of things that I didn't like. Like, it took way too long to tell any of the story. This book had no right being over 400 pages. I think it was closer to 500. I don't know why I did that. Um, it used one of my least favorite tropes, not once, but kind of twice, kind of three times, um, which is like, in the beginning of a story, killing off a character that our main character is close to for like, drama but guess what I don't know that character so I'm not invested I don't care you're not eliciting any emotions in me because I just met them so it doesn't work like I have to get to know the character before I care that they're maimed or killed or whatever <sighs> Renee Audier likes to do that too I'm just saying all right those were the top 10 bottom 10 books I read in 2019 not including DNFs although there were a couple of those um I don't know if any of this video was coherent but I appreciate you listening to my ranting regardless I don't recommend any of these books unless I specifically mention something that I don't like that is something you like like enemies to lovers or really bland confusing writing in which case more power to you be sure to leave a comment down below telling me some of your least favorite books of 2019 bring the tea i'm ready i want to know all your controversial opinions um i'm sure i have a few on here i think the last magician is generally well liked and i don't understand that it took me over a month to read that book so <laughs> Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already and you'd like to see more from me. Um, check out my socials down below so we can stay in touch and you'll be seeing more of me soon. Bye.